Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show. But I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. You're listening to the Think Unbroken podcast, and I'm your host, Michael Unbroken. I'm an author, speaker, coach, and advocate for adult survivors of childhood trauma and abuse. In this podcast, you will learn how to transform your trauma into triumph, turn breakdowns into breakthroughs, and go from victim to being the hero of your own story. You can learn more at thinkunbrokenpodcast.com, and of course, check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify at Think Unbroken Podcast. Hey, what's up, my friend? As we get into today's episode, I want to let you know that this is actually a pre-recorded live keynote from last year's Unbroken Conference. We had so many incredible speakers and over 2,500 people who had registered for the event. And as we headed into the end of that event, I thought to myself, I'm really going to have to share this as a part of the podcast for the community at some point. And that some point is now. So you're going to hear over the course of the next few weeks, some of the incredible keynote speakers, including Dr. Gabor Mate, Jamie Bronstein, Dan Mangina, and more. If you did not watch Unbroken Conference Live, trust me, you are going to get so much value out of this. You're going to want to grab a pen and a piece of paper because these people are not only incredible healers, but they're amazing educators. And so with that, my friend, let's get into the show. So um, I'm just going to speak from the heart. And I do have some some bullets that I will that I definitely want to make sure that I get to. Um, and if for some reason I don't get to everything, um, there are more opportunities which Michael will let you know about at a different time. Okay, so I wanted to start with just saying thank you so much to Michael um, for asking me to do this. It is my it's my honor. Uh, my purpose in life is to help people. To really help people, and people ask me, "What do you do?" Or really, how do you help people? Or why do you do what you do? And I always say, I help people to not suffer. And you wouldn't necessarily think that that would be the answer that a relationship love coach therapist answer would be. But that is the work that I do. Um, I help people to get past their limiting beliefs, to 
really live the life that they're destined to live. And I, I wanted to start off, before we get into the steps to courageously manifesting love, I just wanted to talk about trauma. And I will be talking about it as I intertwine it, of course, through courageously manifesting love. Um, but I, I saw this quote from Gabor Mate, who Michael interviewed. Um, and I wanted to talk about it because it is so meaningful. And I also have another way to look at it as well. So he says that it's not the trauma is not what happened inside of you as a result of what happened to you. Um, trauma is the wound that you incurred inwardly. You can heal that wound at any time. And he was saying, and I agree, that trauma is that you you can't change what happened, but you can change how you feel about it. And what I always say is the issue isn't the issue. It's how you relate to the issue. That's the issue. And with that said, I just wanted to bring up a book that was very pivotal and life-changing for me, and it's called Untethered Soul. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's by David Singer, and I 100% suggest you reading it because the greatest gift from that book is kind of like what I was just saying, which is that something, something can happen to you in your life, but it's the meaning that you put on it. Like when you drive down the highway, you see trees or you see street sign and you just pass right through and there's no meaning to it. There's no emotion. But when trauma or things that happened to us, right, like to say for us, because everything is an opportunity for learning and growth and upliftment, when things happen for us in our lives, instead of staying there, we do have the ability to let it pass through. With a lot of work, like Michael was saying, it's a 12-year journey for him. It's been a, I mean, I've been on a spiritual journey for the past maybe seven years. Um, and what I've learned, I'm going to be teaching today. So I think Michael's point also is that we've been on long journeys. However, we, we teach this stuff to streamline it. And we want you to then teach it to other people to spread the word. So highly recommend that book. Wanted to just talk about trauma that little just um overall in general before i get into manifesting love so um and also one more thing about that there's something called a samskara so these are i've put together kind of all these different ways of looking at trauma before i get into my topic 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 so a samskara is crystallized energy and the thing about crystallized energy within our bodies is, is that it's crystallized until we start chiseling away at it. And I'm going to talk about that throughout my talk right now about how unless we do something about this trauma, this unresolved issue, this negative narrative it within us, it's not going to go anywhere. And subconsciously, it, it pretty much prevents us from living our best life and living the life that we're destined for. So with that said... Now I'm going to start with the steps to manifesting love. And like I said, I don't know if we're going to get to everyone, but we will start with the truth that is the first step, which is that you need to love yourself unconditionally. And you guys have all heard, well, you need to love yourself before someone loves you. And you guys have probably thought that that's BS and you've probably maybe not understood what it fully means. So I'm going to explain to you what I think that means and why it's so pivotal and why if you really, if you look back at your past relationships with manifesting maybe not the right person. And by the way, this whole talk can apply to even if you're already in a relationship. Everything I'm going to talk about, everything that's in my book, which I'll talk about, can apply to whether you're already in a relationship or not. It can apply to your career. It doesn't matter. All of these manifesting steps can apply to everything. So the reason why it's important to unconditionally love yourself first is because our outside experiences are a reflection of our inner reality, meaning that how what's going on inside of us, we will literally manifest that reflection of it. So if you are feeling unworthy of love, unlovable, incapable. you have trust issues, you're going to manifest a relationship or within your relationship already that will just validate that you are unworthy of love or you can't trust people 
or you're incapable of having love. So now you're saying, okay, great, Jamie. So um, I've identified that I have those issues, which a lot of people do. All my clients pretty much come in and they start off with that. What do I do about it? How do I how do I change these negative narratives now that I understand that it's so important to be living this life where I am living with high vibrations, being joy, peace, confidence, really knowing who I am. And the way to do that, one of the ways is I have something called compassionate self-forgiveness. And like Michael was saying, he learned things and he passed them on. I learned this from spiritual psychology school. So compassionate self-forgiveness. It's an exercise that is in my book. Um, so if you don't catch on to this now, you can get my book. It's called Manifesting a Step-to-Step Guide to Attracting the Love That Is Meant for You. So this is what you do. You close your eyes. You put your hand in your heart. You identify what the misbelief is, what the judgment is, what the thing that just is not true is. So you'd say, I forgive myself for buying into the misbelief that I'm unworthy of love. And then in a session, I would I would prompt my client to say, what is the truth? You can do this in line at Starbucks. You don't have to put your hand in your heart and close your eyes. You can do this walking down the street. You can do this anywhere. And then you ask yourself, what is the truth? And the truth is that, of course, I'm worthy of love. And at this point, I want to tell all of you that it is your birthright to have love in your life. There's no way I have so many clients that say, but, but, but this, but that. And I say, do you really think that God said every single person on this earth is worthy of love and and is going to have love except for you? No, everybody is worthy of love. So whatever, getting back to the exercise, whatever your unresolved issue is, or whatever your misbelief is, you say, I forgive myself for buying into the misbelief or for judging, I forgive myself for judging myself as unworthy. What is the truth? I am worthy. And you can do this with anything. Whatever your unresolved issue is or whatever your misbelief or misinterpretation or limiting belief anything is, you turn it around. And this is all about getting unstuck, which we've talked about already tonight. I'm sure the other speakers are going to talk about it also. One of the problems with trauma is that people feel like a victim. And what I want to offer to you is that it's important to get out of victim mode. Going along with everything we're talking about with this first step of manifesting love, you need to get out of victim mode. And why is that? For the same reason that I was just saying. It's because our outside experiences are a reflection of our inner reality. So if you identify as a victim, you will manifest experiences and oppor- not oppor- experiences and people that will reflect that you are a victim. So Once again, the way that you get out of victim mode is to first acknowledge, okay, I've been identifying as a victim. You want to go from victim mode to thriving mode. So you can do that compassionate self-forgiveness with that. I forgive myself for buying into the misbelief that I'm a victim. What is the truth? I am a beautiful being that is worthy of everything in this life. I am empowered. I am strong. And I'm not going to let my past determine my future. It's about making that choice. So an Michael has talked about this also already. Make that choice to start today to say, okay, this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. This was up. This sucked. I did not sign up for this. But what am I going to do about it? And then you have that moment, you have that tender moment with yourself and you say, okay, this is the day that I'm going to start because it doesn't, might not happen overnight. It takes practice. But this is the day that I'm going to start to start loving myself more and not identifying as a victim because I know what's on the other side of this. And what's on the other side of this is freedom. What's on the other side of this is love, pure love, the love that is meant for me. So let's move on from I'm kind of keeping track of time, but not really. So, Michael, just give me a little shout out if you need to. Um, And like I said, I don't know if. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, FactorMills.com, where if you go to FactorMills.com slash Unbroken50 and use the code Unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's FactorMills.com slash Unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, 
work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. We're going to get to every step. I'm, there's, I mean, this is a 200 and something page book that I wrote, so I'm trying to pack it all in. Um, but another very important part of manifesting, of courageously manifesting, is forgiveness. And we were talking about compassion and self-forgiveness. Forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself for anything that you've ever done. Because that's really what loving, unconditionally loving yourself is. It's, I forgive myself. No, I love myself no matter what. And I forgive myself. It's also about forgiving the other people in your life. And I know that that is, seems so hard to do. And I'm sure you guys If you're here, I'm guessing you've dabbled with some sort of therapy. Maybe not. It is so hard to do. This doesn't mean you have to be best friends with this person or you ever have to see this person again. You don't even have to have a talk with this person. But to free yourself from the chains, to forgive anybody in your life that you are holding that crystallized energy with, because it sounds cliche, but it's true. It's only hurting you. It's only keeping you back from love. So forgiveness is a huge part of courageously manifesting love. Okay. Intuition. Intuition is huge. Intuition is my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite topic when it comes to manifesting love. And I just want to tell you first, because people hear intuition all the time and, and they don't necessarily, they think it's like Leslie was saying, well, she didn't say woo woo. She said woo, only one woo. I'll just say woo woo. People think intuition is woo woo. And you know what? Yes, I am an intuitive. I also do readings, even though you wouldn't necessarily know that about me. I'm an intuitive. I can connect with with people that have passed on. Um, but really what intuition is, and we all have it, and why it's so important with manifesting love, is it's that connection with ourselves. So you need to be connected with yourself and know what you're looking for in order to actually manifest love or manifest a better relationship. And intuition, let's say you are single. Intuition comes really handy when you are on a date. Is this a yes or a no? Or you you get into a relationship. You're in a relationship for five years. Is this a yes or a no? And the truth is that you always know the answer. You knew from the beginning the answer. But people make themselves so crazy over having to ask a million people what the answer is, what their answer is, when we are the experts of ourselves. So an exercise for starting to hone in on your intuition, and it's just a muscle like anything else, is just to start being conscious. Everything is about fear and love. Am I making the fearful choice or am I making the loving choice? The fearful choice would be I'm making this choice because this person thinks that I should or society thinks that I should. But the loving choice is I didn't know what makes me happy. And so I'm going to make that choice. And so with love, and love is why we live, love is why we live, you want to make really good choices. So connecting with your intuition is so important. And the exercise is Before you go to sleep at night, I want you to say the top 10 I am statements. I am smart. I am funny. I am courageous. Whatever those, think of 10 qualities. Say them before you go to sleep at night. And then ask the universe. Okay, if you're not spiritual, it doesn't matter. Just ask yourself to connect with yourself. It doesn't matter. But in your sleep state, you will find that when the more you do this nightly, the more you will feel more connected with yourself. And the more connected with yourself, the more your intuition will grow and the more you will be able to manifest that right person for you because you'll be showing up as your authentic self. Let's get into believing and trusting. So in order to manifest love, and let's now let's just bring in 
since I know I have a little bit of time. Let's bring back the the trauma, the anything that happened in your life that is keeping you from love. You, like we were talking about before, you will give yourself any excuse to not find love, to not get love. Your your ego, which is your fear-based mind, will keep you from being in your heart and your authentic self. It will keep you from believing that that love is actually out there for you. So what you have to do is you have to have a talk with your ego and you have to say, I am driving this bus. Take a back seat, okay? <laughs> Take a back seat. I know you're trying to keep me safe, I know you're trying to keep me from getting rejected. I know you're trying to keep me from getting hurt, but I got this. You have to believe it's going to happen for you in order for it to happen. And you have to trust that it's going to happen for you in order for it to happen. You have to trust yourself and trust the universe. And that brings me to something that was so life-changing for me. When I learned that the universe gives us what we need not necessarily what we want my mind was blown so if you can say okay okay i understand that this is what i want but i'm gonna trust i'm gonna trust in some higher power that whatever needs to come into my life will come into my life then that will bring you that which is supposed to come into your life and i personally believe that everything is all planned out. It couldn't have happened any other way, which is, I know for all of us, so hard to believe. I also believe we choose our parents. Um, So this is kind of a hard concept to, to wrap your brain around. But if you can have pure acceptance of everything that has happened to you, and I feel like I'm getting in a little bit of a segue, but I feel so strongly about this because acceptance, what I've learned from my spiritual teachings is that acceptance is really the first law of spirituality acceptance 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 as much as you hate it as much as you wish it could have been different acceptance because acceptance makes you free it frees you so getting back to believing and trusting believe and trust that it's going to happen and the next step is to visualize actually see whether you're already in a relationship or you're going to manifest love actually see things getting better actually see that person in your life Let's just address the single people. So from as simple as if you're single, undo both sides of of the bed at night. Actually live as if that person is already in your life. If you're pouring yourself a glass of wine or setting the table for dinner, invite your future or present person to the table also. This is getting a little woo-woo. However, you can talk to their soul, meaning like, before you go to sleep at night, how was your day? And for some of you, you're like, what are you talking about? But I know that there are some of you that do like this stuff. So I'm just going to say it anyway. So live your life as if that person is already in it. And that also brings the confidence to your life. Like I remember years ago, I mean, I was some early 40s okay, now, but a long time ago, I was a teenager and I remember just feeling a little insecure. And this is obviously way before my spiritual journey. And um, I just, I think I, I've always been an old soul. And I just had this talk with my, I think I was also destined to be a therapist. And I had a talk with myself. And I said, I'm just going to show up at school, at this summer program. I'm just going to show up as more confident than I actually am. And I did. And the reactions of people around me was exactly what you would think would be the reaction to somebody that was more confident than someone who was more reserved. So live as it, when you live as if something is actually happening, it literally happens. People react to that. So if you live as if that person's already in your life, it just helps the universe bring that person closer to you and in a faster fashion. Um, And finally, I'm just going to talk about surrendering. So And this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, which is the universe knows better than we do. Um, This also is a little talk about control. We love to control as humans. It's our favorite thing to do. But control is an illusion. We, okay, not everything. We can control what we put in our mouths. We can control 
what we say. However, when it comes to everything else in life, control is an illusion. So if you just say, okay, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to manifest love, but at the end of the day, I'm also going to not have this this desperate energy because that doesn't help. You know, if you focus too much on something, the universe gives us what we focus on. If you're focusing on the fear it's not going to happen, then it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy and it won't happen. So I'm going to just sit into this. I'm going to live into this. I am going to do everything I can, be my authentic self, believe it's going to happen, trust it's going to happen, do my compassionate self-forgiveness, heal, do everything I possibly can. At the end of the day, then say, I surrender. I surrender. And in my book, I talk about my surrender story with my husband because, I mean, I didn't meet my husband until I was 34. And I, through trial and error, I mean, I was a huge dater. I felt like I dated every man in this whole world. I was also a very good girl, so I was promiscuous, but I I learned a lot. And I had had enough of the situationships and everything. And so I, in my book, I talk about my surrender story. I bring up my grandparents also. I was going to lunch at their house and I walked in the door and I said, I'm free. Because on that drive from the city to my grandparents' house, after I had a situationship night the night before, I decided I'm done. I'm done with with meaningless things. And there had to be a different way. So I went through this whole, all the steps that I just went over. And the biggest thing was that I just surrendered. And I said, okay, universe, like I'm trying so hard. I'm doing so much, but now I'm just going to give it up to you. And then my husband showed up, I don't know, maybe two months later at the end of the summer. So surrendering is really important also. And also it, it lifts this heaviness from us that, that this feeling, this pressure of I have to do everything. If you say, okay, I know I'm doing everything, but now I'm just going to ease into trusting, believing, visualizing, and all the other steps that I talked about, and you just surrender. Thank you so much for listening to Think Unbroken. Please share this episode with someone who could use it and help us move forward in our mission of ending generational trauma in our lifetime. And if you would, please take five seconds to pop on iTunes or Spotify, hit that five star, leave a review. And you can also reach out to us on social at Michael Unbroken or at Think Unbroken. And of course, you can check out our YouTube channel at Think Unbroken. Thank you for being a part of Unbroken Nation, my friends. And until next time, be unbroken. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.